You know what? I should get a Unimog project. That would be cool.
So we left the MAN at my buddy's place overnight because it was on the way here and just more convenient. And we wanted to be unloading in the daylight. But I do think I hear him arriving just now. Since last night, the temperature has gone back up a little, so all the snow is melting and it's turning everything very muddy very quickly. So it might get a little bit messy unloading this stuff.
what have I done? All right, people, this here is a Unimog U82 or an S404.1 or more commonly just a Unimog 404. And I got this thing because I really needed another project vehicle in my life. Well, no, I have known about this thing for a while and that it was sitting in, well, essentially just a scrap pile. And I was actually trying really hard not to buy this one. But it just seemed no one else was willing to give this thing a chance. And I just thought it would be a crying shame if this thing eventually just ended up a scrap. And we do have a little bit of daylight left. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at what exactly I got here. But first of all, can I just say that I'm really glad that I now have that thing. <laughs> because this would have been such a huge task for us to try and move around out in this muddy field without a heavy lifter like that. Because everything related to Unimox is just so much heavier than it looks. So this was someone's project vehicle. That's why it's so disassembled and there are several places where they've been grinding off paint and cutting out pieces to do rust repairs and such. But at some point the project was abandoned and it has now been sitting for a really long time. I don't know exactly how long, I might be able to answer that a little better later on. But for now the best guess we have is well over 10 years. Now they have done a little bit more than just disassembling it and starting some rust repairs. Because these things were originally equipped with a six cylinder gasoline engine. But this one has already been swapped. In here is an OM617 five cylinder diesel. And I think that is exactly the right choice for these vehicles. Unfortunately, that one doesn't turn over. <laughs> so that's the main thing about this vehicle. We're gonna have to see if that engine can be saved or if we're gonna need something else in here. Now the cab itself is looking very intact and it's not at all as rusty as some of my other projects. There is rust, but a lot of it has already been done. It just needs a little bit of cleaning up and there's just a few corners left here and there. So that's a very manageable part of this project. And as for the whole undercarriage of this, the whole frame and drive line and the axles and suspension and all that stuff, it's actually looking really good. Well, it's not pretty, but it's looking good in terms that there's nothing missing. There's nothing that's terribly modified or destroyed or anything like that. So I actually have really high hopes that most of this bottom stuff is going to be all right. One of the reasons I think most of this stuff is good is because this really hasn't driven much at all. It only has 39,000 kilometers on it. Now, of course, that could have been ticked over, but I really don't think it has. These vehicles that are from the military, they typically haven't driven much at all. So that's most likely correct. Obviously, it doesn't count for the engine, but it does count for all of this other stuff. And by the way, if you're wondering why we put the cab on it, if we're going to be working on the engine, well, that's just because I'm not going to get around to that right now. So having the cab on here is just going to make it a lot easier to move this whole thing around and keeping it stored. Now, obviously, this is missing a lot of parts, but I did get a whole box of all the things that have been taken off of it. I have all the engine covers and a lot of the cabin stuff and actually a set of really good seats and also have the front bumper for it. I also got these two extra frame rails. This one is from a Unimog 406 and that one is also from a 404. I don't really have any specific need for them, but there is a good handful of useful parts on these, so I couldn't just leave them behind. Now clearly the biggest thing that we're missing here is something on the back of this. This didn't have a bed or a box or anything to come with it. Now this is a former Danish military vehicle, so all of those have their own unique number. And I've been doing a little bit of digging to try and see if I can figure out exactly what was supposed to be on the back of this. Now I could not find anything on one with this exact number, but I did find pictures of one that had the number just below this. And that one was an airfield ambulance. So there's a good chance that's what this thing was as well. However, I don't see any of the ambulance markings on the cab, so I'm not entirely sure. What I do see is this mark right here on the door. It's kind of hard to see in this light. So this is the picture of some bird 
possibly a hawk if this was part of what I suspect it might have been. And then there's some lightning underneath it and some text that says Radio Chain East. But I've not seen this logo before, so I really don't know what it is. It might have been something that was just slapped on here after its military life. So if any of you guys know exactly what this is, I would really like to hear about it. But if this was some kind of Cold War radio unit, this may very well have been a radio truck. I know a lot of the Unimogs were. And in that case, it would of course have had a big radio box on the back of this. Now it's getting way too dark to film any more out here, but we're not done yet. Because this project has already taken another turn. So the guy I just bought this from, he gave me the contact information to the guy who had it before him. Because he was pretty sure that he would have a nice bed for one of these. And sure enough, I got in contact with the guy and got some pictures of what looks like a very nice original Unimog 404 bed. So I bought that thing right away. Let's go and pick it up. got a whole lot of great stuff with this. There's all of the original boxes and jerry can holders and all of that stuff. There's all the poles that go onto this to hold the soft cover up. 
and even the soft cover itself i mean these things are usually torn apart or just completely missing but this is here and it's actually looking really good this whole thing is much nicer than i was expecting I knew I should have gotten something with four-wheel drive. <laughs> anyway, that can just sit there for now. It doesn't really matter. But check this out. That looks so much better already. It's a shame it's getting so dark. So uh, let's just wait till we get some sunlight and we can check this out a bit more. Here we go. Well, it's not a whole lot of sunlight. It's just kind of gray and rainy, but uh, I guess that's the best we can do this time of year. Anyway, the bed is a little bit crooked on here. It was kind of tricky to try and put it on here by myself, but it is pretty close. And with a little bit of a lining, it should be able to just bolt right down because this is an original Unimog bed. I'm not gonna bolt it down right now because I'm probably gonna have to take it back off when we really start to work on this thing. Now the guy I just bought it from, he also had a 404, but his was a former German Bundeswehr vehicle. That's why the colors are a bit different. But his was to be converted into a camper, so that's why he didn't need the bed for it. But as I also mentioned, he actually owned this vehicle previously. And he was able to tell me a little bit more about it. And he told me that he had it in 2008, and at that time he was driving it around on his lot on that diesel engine. So we know now that it's been about 15 to 16 years ago since this thing was last driving. 
Now this is the first time that I have a 404. I have mostly been dealing with what we often call the round cabs. Well, even though this has sort of a rounded cab, when we say round cab, we usually refer to this 406 style of cab. And I suppose some of you might just be wondering, well, what exactly is the difference here? And I suppose we can just go over some of that because there's actually a lot of differences, so we can't cover it all right now, but let's just do a quick rundown on this. I'll try to explain what it's all about. Now, Unimog names and numbers get very confusing very quickly, especially when you start to find out that most of them have both a sales designation and a series number. So to start the confusion off right away, this thing is a 416, but that is also in the series that we call the 406. It's basically the same vehicle as a 406. The 416 is just a little bit longer. So when I say a 406, I'm really referring to this type of vehicle right here. The one back there is a 421. That's a completely different thing, even though right here they look exactly the same. The specific series number for this thing is, as previously mentioned, S404.1. And that S at the beginning, that only came on a little bit later in the production. I don't know exactly when they added that. At the beginning, it was just 404. But then they gave it the S designation, and that is short for special, because this was sort of a sidelined series of vehicles. Actually, all of these three vehicles are very close in their year. They are all right around the year 1970. So all of the productions are kind of overlapping. So what is it that makes these things special enough that they get that extra designation in their name? Well, actually, it's that they have less than the other Unimogs. The Unimogs are known for being very universal machines. That's why it's even part of the name. But this has done away with a lot of that universal aspect. They've gotten rid of all the farm stuff. This doesn't have air, it doesn't have hydraulics, it doesn't have attachment for different implements and all that stuff. They've done away with all of that and instead just focused on making a very off-road capable cargo truck, specifically for military use and fire rescue vehicles and stuff like that. And on top of that, they just simplified a lot of the design and also made the whole thing lighter. And all of this was also a way to keep the unit cost way down. And as also mentioned previously, this thing normally had a six cylinder gasoline engine in it. That was also a way to make it lighter and more simple, but also it was to make it more useful and more desirable in places where diesel was not so widespread. This was back in the 60s, so a lot of militaries were still using mainly gasoline engines. And to make things a bit more confusing, in the later use of production, the 404 got pretty much the same type of cab that you see on the 406 series. So at a quick glance, it can be a bit difficult to see exactly what series vehicle you're looking at. But there's a couple of quick things you can look for. One of them is the front bumper and the other one is the axle. On the 406 series, the bumper is typically solid all the way over and it has this little dip in it right here where the PTO comes out. While on the 404, you don't have that extra room for the PTO and you have these little holes right here. I think these are steps that you can put your foot into if you're climbing up to the front of it. I'm not exactly sure why they did that because this thing is hanging out so much that you can just step on the bumper. That's usually what I do when I have to get up to the front of this. And the other thing that you can look for is the axle because these look very different. So on the 404 it has one solid axle. Kind of like most trucks, except it has the portals on the end, of course. On the 406 series, the axle is made up of several pieces. So you have two ends that are bolted together in that center differential. So it looks a lot more bulky when you look underneath this thing. Now, of course, you don't always get the chance to see the underside of these. So all you really got to do is look at the wheel hub. On the 406 series, there's nothing on here. Well, there's a whole bunch of bolts, but it's just flat and actually sits a little further back than the wheel itself. While on the 404, you have these big old lumps sticking out the center of the hub with a huge nut on the end. That's pretty easy to tell. And actually, when they have this style of cab, normally there would be a ring around here that you could use to step on to get up into the cab. 
but when they have this type of cab, they get the same type of steps that this one has, so they don't have the ring on the wheels either. So it's gonna look exactly like this one if it has this type of cab. And all of this is where that last one in the name comes into play. If this is a 404.1, it means it's an earlier type with this style of cab. And if it is a 404.0, that means it's a later version with this style of cab. And to make it more confusing, that's also where the sales designation changes to U110, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> now that we're talking about differences between Unimogs, as I said, these look very similar when you just see them, but this is a small 421 and this is a big 406 series. If you want a quick way to tell what you're looking at, look for the snorkel. On the 406 series, it's up here on the driver's side or the left-hand side of the vehicle, and on the 421, it's over on the passenger side or the right-hand side of the vehicle. We can just talk about one more interesting thing about the 404 because this one is where things changed a little bit. You can see the frame on the 404, it goes from straight and then it has this little dip down in the middle and it comes back up and is straight again. They did that so that they could fit the spare wheel down here underneath the bed. And when they did that, they discovered that having that little dip in the frame, that actually allowed the whole frame to twist and flex a little bit more, making this whole kind of unique Unimog suspension work even better. So for all of the following productions of vehicles, they all have that little dip in there. And I can actually show you the difference right here because the 421 was designed before the 404. So on this, the frames are just straight beams going all the way down. It's kind of hard to tell, it's a bit dark in here, but they are, trust me. While the 406 series that was designed after the 404, you can see that the frame does the same thing. It comes out straight, then it has this little dip down, and then it comes back up and ends up being straight again. And I even have the spare wheel holder on this one right here, so that's for exactly the same purpose. I wonder if I can get this to just sit up on the edge here. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> Everything is just loosely hanging on here. Oh yeah, just one more thing we can talk about. As you might have noticed, this one is a closed cab, or it's a hard top, so it has a metal roof. That's actually a bit special as well, because unlike the 406 series, or really the round cabs in general, most of those were hard tops, with only a few of them being convertibles or soft tops. While it was kind of the other way around with the 404s, most of those were convertibles or soft tops with only a few of them being hard tops. And personally, I prefer the hard tops, so it's actually pretty cool that I got one of those. All right, I'm going to stop with all this uh, Unimog nerd talk for now because I don't really want to make you any more confused than you might have already been. I know that all these different series and models and variations, it gets a bit confusing pretty quickly. All those different model numbers, they're kind of all over the place and they don't necessarily make any sense. I don't know all these numbers just off the top of my head either. I often have to go and look this stuff up. But let me know what you think of this thing, because I really do think this can be saved. Of course, I still don't know the exact condition of the drivetrain, and there's still that engine in there. We have to figure out if that is just a boat anchor, or if it can actually get going again. But if it can't, and it is beyond saving, I'm gonna have to figure out if I'm gonna find another diesel for this, or maybe even go back to that original M180 gasoline engine, if I can find one of those. You know, let me know if you want to see a video of me trying to get that thing in there going. But regardless, it's not going to be right now. I kind of want to wait for some warmer weather. So uh, I'm going to end this video here. Thank you all for watching along and we'll see you in the next one.